something that is going to make your website so much better and something that is actually very necessary is media on your website. That could be in the form of images, videos, um, uploaded PDFs, things like that is going to enhance the user experience on your site. And so understanding what media you can and can't use, how to get it on your site, it's really an important process. If you go to the back end of your website, you are going to see your left-hand sidebar menu and you're going to go down to media. Hover over the word media and you'll be taken to um, a submenu that says library or add new. Click on library. This media library is going to hold everything that you ever upload to your website. Um, so you can see here in my media library, I have all the images that came with the, um, the demo import that I did. And so these images are images that are just holding places while you um, are getting ready to create content. But eventually you're going to need to add your own images. And so where do you get images for your website? And there, there's a couple different options. The number one and probably best option is to take your own photos. Now I get that that's not really feasible in every situation. Maybe you're writing about something that you're interested in, but you don't have direct access to. And so if you can take your own images, that's great. Do your best, take nice images. And they don't have to be perfect or very set up. There's actually a lot of value in an image that looks like it was taken by a real person. Number two are stock images. Now, in the world of the web, there are free stock images and there are paid stock images. The problem with free stock images is that there are a ton of licensing pitfalls that you could fall into. A lot of images that are free are most likely not the best images to use. In fact, I would recommend never publishing a free image on your website. It's going to be better if you are going to use stock images to pay for your stock image to make sure that you have the correct licensing for that image so that you don't get in trouble down the road. There's a lot of regulations around people's images. And so you really wanna make sure that you're on the right side of the law there. So a couple media options here where you can find stock images. Uh, the one that we use is called 123rf.com. They have a great library of images, millions of stock photos, they say. But while that is the case, they are rather expensive. Stock images can be spendy, um, which is why taking your own pictures can be better. But I get that that's not uh, feasible for everyone. So 123RF is a great option if you are interested in a great library of images and aren't too worried about the cost. Um, and they do have deals fairly often. Just last week they had a 15% deal. Now it looks like they're having a 25%. So depending on the time when you watch this video, they may or may not have a deal, but they fairly often run some sort of deal. Another option that we commonly use, we've used in the past, and we have recommended in the past since they've made a deal with us to give our income school creators um, and you, our income school students, um, a cheaper rate. It's dreamstime.com. It's 156 million stock photos. That's a lot of photos. Um, so they do a pretty good job where they have a lot of uh, variety of images and their pricing is a little, a little more reasonable than 123RF. Another option is stock photos by Canva. Canva offers you some uh, design tools where you can put text on images, make little infographics, but they also do have paid stock images. They do have free stock images, but again, I wouldn't use them for your website. Since your website is going to be a business that is for profit, you really should stay away from using um, the free images. So those are a couple places that you can find media for your website. Another great option for finding media for your website is on YouTube. Now you do have to be careful, but on YouTube, you are free to embed any video on your website that you want. And really it's as simple as copying the URL of the video that you want to embed and pasting it in your blog post. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if there are some videos on YouTube that cannot be copied and pasted, but it just won't let you, so you'll know very easily. But most videos can be copy and pasted. So if you find a really great video as a great resource, you can paste it in to your blog post and it will look like an image. The thumbnail will show. So that's a really good option if you do want to go the free route. Um, you can use YouTube videos. Now as far as getting the images on your website. So go back to the back end of your website. 
click on media and then add new. We're going to be adding new images to the back end of your website. And so the way you're going to do this is you're going to select files and it's going to take you to all the files on your on your computer. So if you do get a stock image subscription, then you will pick the images that you want and then download them to your computer and then you'll re-upload them to your website. Same goes if you take your own images, you'll load them onto your computer, upload them to your website. And so I'm going to take um, this image here and I'm going to choose it and it's going to upload to my website and it's going to upload to my website. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes a little bit. Okay. It says that it has uploaded. So it gives me option to edit it if I want. And then it just has very basic editing options here. Um, nothing that interesting or exciting. Um, you'd be better off using some other software to edit, but you can change the dimensions. You can crop it if you need to. You can make it a thumbnail. You can rotate it, flip it around. So you can do those things if you want. But now that I've uploaded, if I go back to my library, you'll see here that it is up on the, fur, the, the top corner, the top left corner of uh, my image library. So once you have your image uploaded, it's just there the whole time. And you can use images in multiple blog posts, so you'll always have all of those images here. Um, and as you can see, this image that I uploaded was a screenshot of a document, but you can also upload PDF documents to your website and then take the URL of the PDF and embed it in a page or something like that where people can actually click the link and then go to the PDF. There's a lot of great ways, a lot of great media that you can have on your site. The most important thing is that you only use images that you have the rights to use. Something also very important to remember is the image optimization. A lot of times the images that you upload to your website are going to be way too big for the web. Um, they're going to take a long time to load. And so if you don't have an image optimizer, go back to the video where I talk about plugins and that's going to help you understand what tools are available. We use the plugin called Short Pixel Image Optimizer, and it just compresses the images to load faster for the web. All right, that's all you need to know about media, and we'll see you in the next lesson.